you're anything like me, you're probably slightly addicted to buying art supplies. You probably have more pens, paints and brushes than you'll ever actually be able to use and yet somehow you never actually get round to using most of them. So they just sit in a drawer and you never use them and you're basically just wasting your money. In my own collection, I have mop brushes, round brushes, cheap brushes, expensive brushes, brushes that shed everywhere, brushes that I use once and then never use again. To tackle this problem recently, I've been trying to buy a lot less but being a lot more thoughtful about the things that I do buy and making sure that they're things that I can actually use in my day-to-day -day art. And that's where the dagger brush comes in. Could this be the only brush you ever need? Could this be the one brush to rule them all? So the idea behind this brush is that it can be everything at once. It's big enough and it holds enough water that it can cover large areas of your painting, but it also has a very pointed tip, so you can get really fine details with it as well. I first heard about this brush from urban sketcher Liz Steele. She uses it all the time, and she has said in the past that if she could just pick a single brush to use, this is the brush she would pick. Out of all my brushes, there are three that I usually use in my paintings. A mop brush, which is what I use for the first wash, the second layer is completed with a round brush and the final layer is with a thin rigger brush. Check out my video on tea, milk and honey for a more detailed description of these three stages. So my question was, can this one brush really replace the three that I usually use? To find out, I'm first of all gonna have a play around with it make some marks on the page and just see what it can do and then after that I'm going to use it for the very first time in a painting and tell you some of the thoughts that I had along the way as I made that painting. So let's go and have a play around with this brush and see what it can do. It's definitely a little tricky to create a completely straight line with this brush. It also doesn't hold as much water as a mop brush but you can't expect it to do everything exactly as well as each brush, but I guess the idea is that it can perform each task well enough that you can still create some great things with it. One thing I really like is this effect. It's almost like a calligraphy effect that you can get with it by adjusting the pressure of the brush. And here I'm just seeing how long I can go for using the flat edge and a lot of water. I think that's actually pretty decent considering it's not a mop brush and I'm going to do the same with the smaller edge and see how long we can go for until it runs out of paint. Yeah as you can see it's definitely a bit of a challenging brush to fully control and kind of moves in a weird way that you wouldn't necessarily expect it especially if you're used to using just normal regular round brushes. So yeah, if you're using the thinner side of this brush, you can actually go for quite a long time. And even using the flat side, it creates this curved pointy shape along the left hand side though, which again, just reminds me of calligraphy, which I think is really cool. So here I think, I'm not exactly sure what I was trying to do, I think I was just seeing what shapes you can get if you're just being a bit messy with it. And one thing that I did notice is you can't really get a rounded shape, I mean it's kind of obvious when you look at the shape of the brush, but if you were trying to create some rounded edges to the shape here it would be quite difficult to achieve with this brush because it is so pointed at the end, so that is something to bear in mind. So here I'm just trying some dry brush work and it again creates a really beautiful dry brush effect with this brush which is great. And this sketchbook doesn't have super textured paper anyway but it's still creating a really nice dry brush effect so I'd love to see what it does on some super textured paper. And now I'm just testing it out on an actual painting. So this is the very first painting that I did with this brush. One thing I realise is it is quite difficult to do big wet areas in the same way that you would with a mop brush but as you can see here getting in tight corners is very easy with this brush so that is really nice. So 
I've definitely got a lot of learning to do with this brush. I can see its potential, but it's definitely going to take me a while to really understand how it moves and what are the best ways to use it. I definitely struggled throughout this painting to fully get the effect that I wanted, but you know, that's just something that happens when you buy new art supplies and it takes a long time to get used to certain things. So that's definitely something I would recommend is don't panic if the first thing that you do with a new art supply isn't the best thing you've ever done because it, it's the first time you've ever tried using it. So just bear that in mind. I really liked these lines here and this is when I was starting to realise the calligraphy effects that you can get with this brush which is really great for sketching and doing quick fast shapes which I do a lot in my paintings and going up this tree was very easy with this brush which is nice. I think I was starting to get the hang of using this brush to do large washes by this point. It definitely just involves adding a lot more water than you would with a mop brush because it doesn't hold the water as much. I've definitely still got a lot to learn with this brush but I think it's going to really rethink the way that I paint and also help me question if I actually need quite so many brushes in my collection. You might also find that by having fewer art supplies you actually create more often because you just immediately know which ones to reach for. You can have them laid out on your desk and it just makes the whole process a lot simpler and a lot easier and you'll probably be a lot more likely to actually paint every day. If you like this video I'm going to link a few more that you might like to at the end of this video. That's all from me and my little dagger brush. I will see you in the next video.